Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Tebs Talks, the premier useless podcast. I'm your host, Jason Tebs. A while ago, I was having a meeting with my team lead at work. Uh, this is for my current job. Uh, the teams have shifted around, so this guy's not my team lead anymore. But, you know, we were just going over how things were going, you know, what was going well, what we could be doing better. Just your regular, like, meeting that you have with your team lead. We do, like... Not monthly evaluations, but just monthly meetings. And um, he was like, hey, there's just one thing. Like, we're fine if you joke around. We're good if you crack jokes. You know, you bring a lot You bring a lot of liveliness to the team. You love to interact with people. We're fine if you bring that comedic value. He told me, just be careful with who your audience is and what you say. And I was like, that's fair. I, I can definitely tell that some of the things I've said, certain team members have kind of had a look of, uh, not super jazzed about that joke or that comment. And when you're in a work environment, like, I'm not here to say, oh, I should be able to say whatever I want and people should understand that the things I say are a joke. Like, context is always key, but when you're at work, so much of the context is you are at work. So I am definitely a person that's like, hey, be polite to those around you in general, especially when you're in a work environment. Not everybody's going to share the same beliefs as you. And the point of your work environment ultimately is to get work done. And if you have a great relationship with your friends and you can joke around with your, you know, your fellow employees and coworkers, that's fantastic. You know, I've had employees or I've been able to joke around with coworkers in the past because we were just really good friends and we had very similar personalities and we hung out after work. And I'd consider them a friend first and a coworker second. We happened to meet at work, but you know, we became friends. So, you know, there were things, you know, Ryan at my last job. I could joke about things with Ryan that literally any co other coworker, I wouldn't joke about those certain things. Even if we were at work and we would be in a, like a, a private setting where it was just him and I that were the only ones in the conversation that I could only hear. Same about like any other job. Certain coworkers you just jive with better than other coworkers. That's totally okay. So my team lead was like, not that anybody's had any formal complaints about anything that you've said, but I've just noticed that certain things you say hit a certain way with certain individuals and just just be mindful he's like keep keep making the jokes like keep having fun at work we we love the spirit that you bring uh in terms of a jovial spirit but just keep it in mind and i was like hey jeff i got you i already have in my mind some examples of comments that i've said that might not have hit very well with certain people that i could not change how i am around them but just be more mindful of what I say around certain people. The The joke in question that, at least in my mind, is the example that I had was there was a recent controversy about excessive force by a police officer. And, you know, the team, it was the recent news, like that day or that week. So we're like, oh, you know, that that's horrible. That's not fun. That's not great. And I made the comment, I was like, the police force is stupid. And to a degree, that is my actual beliefs. I wholeheartedly believe that many of police forces are completely corrupt. It is a very power mongering system that only protects a very specific subset of people that oftentimes does more harm than good. And that we should definitely, definitely take a lot of the money that we're spending on police forces and put it into better programs to actually help our communities. I don't think police officers are trained well enough for a lot of the situations that they get called to handle. I don't believe that police officers get enough help in terms of mental stability to handle the stresses that they do. Cause I'm not going to lie. It, it doesn't seem like a fun job in the slightest, but if you get somebody that already has a certain mindset that gets put in stressful situations that thinks a certain way and then a whole force behind them that is in a similar situation that will degrade you for having any sort of mental hardship that doesn't let you relax 
or get out your thoughts and feelings or properly handle the stresses that come with your job because it can be a dangerous job. Like when actual officers are fighting actual criminals that are in actual life and death situations, not a fun, I don't envy them. When you see these videos of like a routine traffic stop and suddenly have 30 cops pointing their guns at one person that's completely unarmed or stories of enforcement officers breaking into the wrong house and then shooting everybody up, that's where you, that's where I believe we have a systemic problem in a lot of police forces in the world. I'm a white dude that lives in Utah. All my interactions with police officers have been pretty good. I've gotten tickets in my day, but I've had officers kind of like help me out talk me through a situation i've been able to reason with officers like hey mostly my things have been traffic related because traffic laws and me aren't always followed all the time speeding i ran a red light taking a right hand turn anyway so we're talking about a recent event of what i believed was ex excess force by a police officer and i wholeheartedly believe that that police officer should have been completely fired, thrown in prison. I forgot the exact event that happened. The unfortunate thing in America is there are too many of these events where I can't remember which one we were talking about at the time. So I made the comment like, the police force and officers are stupid. Like, it's dumb. We shouldn't have it. It needs to be like completely rechanged. And one of my coworkers did not super appreciate that comment. Now, I said it in a very poor way. I could have said it way better like, hey, I think there's a systemic problem in a lot of police forces. I don't have the answer, but I believe something needs to change. But in my aggravation with the situation, I was like, officers are dumb. All of them. Kind of like, was it a joke? Not really. I can't say, ha ha. It was a joke. It, it was my actual beliefs. I said it in a tone where I was like, ah, here's an offhanded comment. So, no, I'm not going to defend myself like, oh, it was just a joke, get over it. Because it was my actual beliefs poorly presented in a offhanded comment type of way. But it lies under that thing where it's like, hey, I had a certain audience of people at work. And I said a comment that should not have been said in front of that audience. Not that we shouldn't have been able to have that discussion. But the comment and the way I said it was just not appropriate for the workplace. I'll wholeheartedly admit that. Now, other people around probably just like, uh, took my comment, whatever. It was just kind of an offhand remark at a very unfortunate circumstance and likely had similar beliefs that I had where it's like, this situation's dumb and the fact that the officers are having zero repercussions is dumb. So maybe they were able to extrapolate those details and infer what I was implying. I will admit, I should have spoke clearly enough where there shouldn't have been any implication or any need to infer. I should have been clear with what I was trying to state. But this one coworker, I saw visibly that it didn't sit with them very well. Now, again, I live in Utah. It's a very white state. It's a very Republican state. This coworker, I would imagine, is one of those not like crazy conservative trump pence rally attending trump's our next savior type person but is more of like a hey reagan economics let's go type and i i am i might be completely misreading this person i'm trying to be very vague um i might be very, I, I might be misreading this person's political beliefs i might be misinterpreting how they actually think about the exact situation and that's all on me that's 100 percent my fault like, I am 100% admitting I was 100% at fault in this situation. My comment came off in a way that was very brash. I should have explained myself better. I have an assumption about this coworker and what they believe politically. It very well could be that that particular coworker didn't have any offense to my particular comment. Very well could be that. I could be reaching on things. The reason why I'm saying all of this at the end of the day is one, I was on Reddit. I saw a video of another situation where police officers mishandled, in my opinion, the situation. They greatly overstepped their bounds. They, rather than de-escalated the situation, they greatly escalated the situation. They had their guns drawn 
and drawn in a way where it's like one of the officers, you could tell, hey, you are not properly brandishing your firearm in a safe, trained manner. They looked like a thug the way they were brandishing their firearm. But way beyond that, they shouldn't have had their firearms brandished in the first place. Like, everything should have been holstered. So it's just another situation where I see yet another example in America where there's just beyond excessive police force. And the situation gets escalated by officers that don't have proper training. And I go to the comments. And especially when you're on a site like Reddit, the comments can be a wild place. And there were arguments and statements that were, you know, typed out because it's a, it's a forum thread, it's a comment thread, where I'm looking at them and I'm like, I believe the underlying issue, me and this commenter agree on probably 90% at least of this whole situation, but their comment just comes off in a way that is not productive to the overall conversation and just creates more division and more hate. And so it made me think back on, okay, that comment I made some time ago at my job probably came back or caused more division than helping the situation. Now, I'm also a guy that I'm not afraid to really joke about any circumstance or situation. I can find a hu I can find humor in a lot of things. That's just a lot of times how I process things just through humor. It's like, hey, where can I see a silver lining or where can I just see something that I can laugh about for a little bit? Plus a lot of things, it's like they just, I let them roll off my back and I can hit them with a bit of humor as they roll off my back. Where other people, like things might affect them more. So there may have been other times or I can guarantee there have been other times where I said a joke. To me, it was clearly a joke and somebody else, it probably didn't hit right that police comment being one of them, but there were likely others. And my my belief is something needs to change. I'm tired of seeing excessive police force. Like I'm really tired of that. Almost, or I'm almost as tired of seeing the discussion around it though. In Reddit threads, on the internet. I mean, when I get face to face with people and we actually talk it out, that's when productive conversation happens, but you know, I, I can't do that with every single person in this Reddit thread. I don't want to do that. You know, I'm having dinner with some of my friends tonight. I don't think we're going to discuss this particular topic. I have no plan to bring up this particular topic. But I know with them, we could have a very positive conversation about it. And we've had great conversations where we haven't agreed with everything. But we respect each other and love each other enough to discuss and give our opinions and give our thoughts on it. It sucks that tragedies happen. And thankfully the events of today weren't a tragedy. Everybody came out of it alive. Still an incredibly unfortunate circumstance that shouldn't have happened. But then the discussion around these tragedies gets so exhausting. And when you have a platform like the internet where you can really say anything and the whole world can be your audience, but then again, you're not really held accountable by that audience. Just some of the worst comments, and I would say discussion, but they're not discussions, happen. And so I think back, like, you know, where were the times? Because I try not to comment on a ton of things on the internet. Like, I have this podcast where hopefully I try and explain myself the best I can. But it's hard to do on, like, a Facebook comment or a Reddit thread. So I, I think back on my life, like, when are those moments where I have said something that just really didn't help the situation at hand, where my comment was poorly worded, poorly explained, where I implied something that couldn't be inferred by my audience, and I just think about, like, that discussion I had with my team lead at work. Unfortunate that it happened at work, right? I, I, should, I should have been more professional. I should have taken a second on that particular comment and maybe some of my other comments and said, okay, what setting am I in? Who's around me? How will I proceed? And after that, after that discussion with my boss, I definitely was a lot more measured in how I used my humor. And I made sure like in the context, it was appropriate with the people. It was appropriate and it didn't come off 
as bad as some of my other comments might have come off. Now, I've yet to be reprimanded by any of my comments since then, if I can remember correctly. So it's like I learned my lesson, and we grow and we learn and we continue on. I also am of the belief that anything can be joked about. Now, when people hear that belief, some people are like, whoa, I can think of a whole list of topics that should not be joked about. Like, I'm going to softball one out there, rape. A lot of people are like, hey, not something to joke about. I don't believe I am remotely in the position to ever crack a joke about rape in any context. However, I don't believe that's the same for everyone. Certain people process things different ways. And under the right context with right context with the right audience, someone somewhere, I believe, could make an appropriate joke about anything. Again, I don't think I'm the one to make any joke about a topic such as that anytime soon. But humor can bring healing is what I'm trying to get at. Humor can bring healing. I watched this interesting video by this YouTuber, Van Neistat. And if you don't know who Van Neistat is, he is the brother of Casey Neistat. And if you don't know who Casey Neistat is, he's an incredibly famous vlogger on YouTube. And Van Neistat is doing this series on YouTube, which is, in my opinion, one of the greatest YouTube series that has come out in my recent memory. It's called The Spirited Man. And in it, he is talking about, quote unquote, the spirited man and what the spirited man is and how one becomes a spirited man and what the spirited man embodies. And it's a, it's a very interesting series that I would highly suggest to really anybody, uh, especially nowadays where it's just like, we kind of need something inspirational. But the episode he put out, it was either today or yesterday. He was talking about comedians and how he was very grateful for comedians during this whole pandemic time because comedians brought laughter, they brought joy, they brought just a different perspective on all the crap that we're going through where we could take a step back and laugh at it a little bit and just chuckle and take some of the edge off of what was going on and realize, hey, it kind of sucks, but we can laugh. Like, we still can laugh about it. So yeah, the the global pandemic, that's, in some people's lives, very direct. They might have lost a loved one, a, a father, a mother, a child, a sibling, to this terrible virus that has ripped through the world. I haven't been very personally affected, other than being shut in at home, slowly losing my mental stability, as you can tell by my last couple of episodes of this podcast but i've been watching some comedians and it's like <clears throat> hey this sucks for all of us it sucks for some people worse than others but it sucks but here's kind of some funny things that have happened in that suck some things that we can all relate to that we all can agree can just that just suck but let's laugh about it for a little bit i think during some of the darkest times comedians are some of the most needed people now, people make tasteless jokes in a bad, poor context to the wrong audience. And that's not okay. Just because you're a comedian, I don't think, gives you the right to say anything or make a joke about anything. I think there is a specific craft of taking a topic and turning it into a in-context, appropriate-for-the-audience joke. Now, there are always going to be people that take it out of context. And that's not on the comedian, that's on the person taking the thing out of the context. Bill Burr is a great example. So much of his stuff gets taken out of context, but if you listen to the joke as a whole, you're like, ah, that's a joke. And at the very least, if you don't think it's funny, you can understand the underlying context and get what he's actually trying to say. Dave Chappelle, another one. Joe Rogan's been another one. I'm a freak, any comedian, really. Context matters so much. Audience matters so much. Now, 
this day and age, you don't really get to choose who your audience is. Like, stuff gets put online. So your audience is going to be, like, way bigger than just who is in the actual physical audience of the auditorium. So, yeah, a comedian might have a certain style. And is like, okay, there are people that have paid to see this show. There are people that are voluntarily coming to what I say. And I have crafted a set where I believe I've given all the context to everything I'm about to say. And it's great. And then somebody takes a clip, puts it online, puts a spin on it. You can't fault the comedian for that. But I still think comedians are incredibly, incredibly important during dark times to just bring a little bit of light or perspective. At the end of the day, sucky things happen, like awful things happen. But I believe if you can't eventually laugh about the situation, not not the direct situation, but at the end of it, if you haven't gained enough context where you can look back on something and at least chuckle, even if it's about like, oh man, my view of the world was so limited back then and I've learned so much. <laughs> I can't believe I thought I used, I can't believe I was a high schooler thinking I knew it all. I can't believe I was a guy that had gone home from a mission and was figuring things out and learning so much about himself in the world where I thought I knew it all. I can't believe I was somebody that was like, oh yeah, I can have a child because I know it all. I can't believe, you know, I was somebody that just yesterday was crying on this very podcast thinking that I had the solution to my life and I wanted to make that choice. I can look back at yesterday's episode and chuckle about it a little bit. Though I still believe it. Though I still believe it's a choice that I want to make. Though it's very personal to me and I was very vulnerable in that episode. Like with today, a new perspective, another day gone by, I can look back at it and chuckle a little bit. I think we need laughter. They say laughter is the best medicine. I I believe that. I think laughter is healthy and so much of it requires context and so much of it requires an understanding of things. For example, I love jokes about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I also hate jokes about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I have been my whole life. I've had my ups and downs with it, my highs and lows, but at the end of the day, it's something I do believe in and it's something that has brought me a lot of peace in my life and a lot of perspective on things. And it has given me hope and faith that there's going to be a better end to this all. And there are jokes I've seen about this church that I'm a part of that I can tell are not mean-spirited. They're just a funny observation about some of the idiosyncrasies of being members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I can laugh at them. Like when the musical The Book of Mormon came out, or the South Park episode about Joseph Smith, uh, the creators had a quote, because they the creators of South Park and the Book of Mormon musical were former Mormons, or former members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And in, 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 in an interview, they're like, hey, we didn't make the Joseph Smith episode of South Park to like rag on the church. At the end of the day, we just think they're kind of a misunderstood people, and we just wanted to bring some humor to that situation. And they, I think both of them had gone on missions for the church. So it's like, it, it was a deep part of their lives. And I can tell in context that it wasn't just a slander campaign on the church. It was just one of those things where they're like, hey, we've had our highs and lows with this thing. And we hope we can just make kind of a in context joke to the right audience. And sure, there are people that didn't take it with the proper context and got offended by it. Same with the Book of Mormon musical. But... From my perspective, I'm like, hey, I know you're not trying to damage me. I know that you're just taking your own life experience and bringing a bit of humor to it. I'm not going to be offended by that. But on the flip side, I've seen countless jokes about the church that are just purely in bad taste. And I still don't get offended by them because I know that they are trying to come from a place of bad taste. And I just look at it and I'm like, you're not helping the greater discussion. You're not helping anybody have any clarity on either side. You're just causing further hatred and division. And okay, a lot of these come from former members. And it's rough. I get it. Here's this thing 
They had a certain set of beliefs that promised something that no longer holds truth in your life. I get that. That's rough. I can understand where you're coming from in that sense. But it's just the way you go about the joke with like hatred behind it that I'm like, okay, I wasn't funny. I'm not going to, I'm not going to write you up to your boss or the internet police or go to your house and tell your mother, like, I'm a pretty easygoing guy. I'll let it slide off my back. But also, I'm just going to disassociate with this situation. I'm going to leave. I'm going to go someplace else. I can watch the South Park episode about Joseph Smith and laugh and then watch another episode. I can listen to songs from the Book of Mormon musical. There's one in there where I'm like, this seems a little bit in poor taste, but I'm not going to get hell bent over it. The opening song where it's like, hello, my name is Alder Price. I think that's a banger. I love that song. It's fun. It's so upbeat. Got these missionaries just ringing on doors, all doughy eyed. Like, hey, let's go preach the word of God. Now, the whole story of the Book of Mormon musical is he yeah, has kind of a crisis of faith a bit. And he goes out all doughy eyed and then he's like, wow, serving in Uganda. I'm pretty sure it's Uganda. Serving in Uganda is rough. And I, I haven't seen the Book of Mormon musical in its entirety, but I think it's kind of like that disparity of, oh, you believe in an all loving God, but there's this huge disparity in quality of life for somebody living in America where this elder's from and somebody living, I, th I think it's Uganda. I should probably check my sources, but really any part of Africa would do and just has way worse conditions and the, the whole dynamic of that kind of beyond the scope of, of this discussion right now. Cause I'm talking about, you know, taking things in context versus out of context. I would like to be a comedian. I don't think I would want to be a full fledged comedian in the sense where I'm doing tours and that's my income and I'm on the road a lot, but I have always thought like, Oh, you know, I would want to do an open mic night and just try it out. You know, that was one of my goals for 2020. And then the Rona happened. So I'm, I'm going to try it out hopefully in 2021. I just got to muster up the courage to try it and go for it because I've thought of some jokes. Like you get three minutes at the open mic night I would do. I'm like, Hey, I have a story that I think is funny that I could tell in three minutes just to give it a try. See if I like it. And comedy is just an observation of life. And I have a lot of opinions that I feel like I can spin in funny ways. I don't think I've ever been worried that what I say is going to be taken out of context, especially because I usually try and find where people's lines are and figure out like, Hey, what makes them tick? What sets them off? You know, what is appropriate to them or not appropriate. And I try and play those boundaries. I think I'm actually pretty good at that. The rough thing is like, if you have a full audience and I haven't been able to take that time to do that with every individual person, should I be worried that something I say might come off wrong or hurtful or bigoted? So the material that I've specifically thought of that I would want to do on an open mic night for the most part is pretty tame. There's one and I don't want to give too much away in case I ever like do a three minute routine and, and have this joke in there, but there's kind of an overarching story in my life where I was like, somebody came out to me, like, they're like, Hey, I'm gay. And I was like, that's great. But you did that at the most inconvenient time you possibly could have done it. And just kind of like a whole joke about, you know, the timing of when somebody comes out of the closet. That That's all I say about that. Now it's just an observation on an experience I had with somebody else coming out of the closet. So I want to be respectful for, you know, that community of anybody that's had to come out in that fashion where they've had something that they felt they couldn't be true to themselves. And then saying to the world, like, Hey, this is the true me. And I hope you accept me. I want to be, I want to be sensitive to that experience, but also it was just a situation in my life where I was like, man, <laughs> this is really inconvenient for me in a way. And obviously I would make it a little more dramatic than what actually happened. Gussy it up a little bit for the sake of gussing it up in comedy to make it hit. But I did go to this person and I was like, I was like, Hey, can I tell the story of when you came out? And like, if I did that in a comedy routine, would you be offended? And they're like, no, like that actually be very funny. And if you do that, I want to be in the audience so I could hear that. So 
my audience would probably be in that specific scenario, that one person that I had that shared experience with, you know, them coming out, but then giving it through my very exaggerated side of the story for the sake of comedy and knowing that like, Hey, that person won't get offended. So at that point, I don't care what anybody else thinks about it because it's like, Hey, my specific audience was this one person and we're, we're clear there. And this joke wasn't really for anybody else. Now, obviously I'd be telling it to an audience, hoping to make them laugh. They'll be able to take their own experiences and extrapolate details and hopefully find some humor in the situation and be like, oh, you know, I, I get that. And maybe other people that have like had a coming out story would be like, ha, huh, you know, that's funny the way that all kind of broke down. But at the end of the day, if like I'm good with the one person that the joke kind of involves, I don't care beyond that. Like my audience is okay. Everybody else beyond that. Hopefully they understand the full context. If not, that's not my fault. At the end of the day, like context really is king for everything, for everything. Context is king. Hopefully we are doing our best to provide all the context that needs to be there, but context is king. So I saw a video on Reddit that just didn't sit well with me. And it reminded me of times where I didn't give proper context and explain what I truly felt and what I truly meant. It was in poor taste because I didn't give good context. So to end it all off in the most context I can give, we need change to how police handle situations, better training, just a whole societal change of loving one another. It's not going to happen overnight, but hopefully by talking about it in a proper contextual way, we can move forward. So dear listener, if you've made it this far, I hope that at the end of this, we can agree that we don't want to see any more police brutality, that we want to see police officers held to a better, higher standard, because if they're enforcing the law, the law should apply to them even more so. That officers can feel like they are safe, that officers feel like they can properly handle the situations that they are put in, that officers feel like they are serving a community and all of its inhabitants, that the community can get behind a, uh, a safety force, that everybody feels like whatever force is upholding the law there or enforcing the law, enforcing, there's key differences there, whatever force is enforcing the law, wherever they may live, that they can trust them to do the right thing, to be there in time of need, and that we can have the proper social structures to handle the situations that arrive in our societies. The police force is not well enough equipped to handle everything that gets thrown at them. Hopefully we can have those systems in place to handle the various things. I just want a more loving, safer tomorrow where we can have discussions in proper context and that if tragedy does happen, we can all grieve how we need to grieve and we can come back and maybe have a laugh about a thing or two just to help us cope and continue on and see a little brightness in our day. Anyway, that's where I'm going to end today's episode of Tip Socks, the premier useless podcast. Go ahead, like, favorite, share, follow, rate the podcast, whatever you do on your respective platform. Check out my website, jasontebs.com. That's where you can kind of check out the other the other things that I do. Um, kind of a deeper episode. I mean, yesterday's was deeper in a different way. Uh, this one is just Saturday morning going on the internet. My thoughts on what's been going on and what's been making me, what's just bouncing around in my head and trying to get it out to help me process it. But I love you so much. Thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you next time on Tep Stocks, the premier useless podcast. Peace.